In this video, we're going to look at how to do object pooling, where when we start the game, we'll create a pool of objects that are deactivated. For when we want to use them, they become activated and then deactivated again when no longer in use. For this example, we're going to be using bullets and enemies in this cool little space shooter. Object pooling is used to optimize performance when reusing objects. So instead of creating and destroying them frequently during gameplay, we reuse the same objects over and over, thus improving overall performance. It's really cool and exciting. It makes you feel like a real game dev, which you are, because you've got a Unity tutorial open, and that's all it takes. I promise. Cool, let's get started. So first of all, I'm going to create a new 2D project. And in our scene, I'm going to open up my folder and drag in the sprites I'm going to use. I've got one for an enemy, one for our spaceship, and one for our space background. The space background I got from Deepfold on itch.io, who's made this cool space background generator. And our enemy and spaceship are also from Deepfold, from his pixel sprite generator. I'll link both of these below if you want to grab some different ones for yourself, or you can grab the sprites for free on my Patreon. So selecting these, I'm just going to drag them over to our assets. Then I'm going to set the pixels per unit to be 45, filter mode to be point no filter, and compression to be none, and click apply. Now we can drag our space background into our scene. Next, I'll drag in my ship into the scene, and we'll also add in our enemy. If your enemy or ship are behind the background, you can just move order in layer on additional settings in the sprite renderer up a bit, so they appear above the background. So like we know, we're going to want to use object poolers for game objects that we're going to be reusing many times over. In our case, we're going to want to do this for our bullets that we're going to shoot from our ship and our enemies. So we're going to want two object poolers in our game scene, but to pull these objects, we're only going to need one script. So in my assets, I'm going to right click and go create C sharp script and name this object pooler. I'm going to double click on this to open it up and at the top, we can add our variables. So first of all, let's go public game object. I'm just going to call this prefab, which is going to be the prefab we want to pull. Next, we'll want a public int, which we'll call pool size. And I'll set this to a default of 10. And then finally, a private list of type game object, which will be our pool. This is where our pooled objects will be stored. When our game starts, we're going to want to initialize the pool of objects. So let's delete update because we won't be using that. And instead, we'll write a new function, which will be a private void called initialize pool. Here we're going to go pool equals new list of game object and create a for loop where we go int i equals zero. i is less than pool size and then i plus plus. So we're going to go around this for loop as many times as our pool size is set to. So by default, 10 times. So in here, we're going to want to create a new game object, which we can just call obj. And we'll do this by typing equals instantiate, open brackets, pass in our prefab, since we want to make a copy of whatever prefab we're trying to pull. We can pass in vector2.0 and quaternion.identity. Vector0 is its position and quaternion identity is its rotation. It's just mean basically default. <laughs> and since we're pulling these objects and we don't want them appearing in the game, we want to go obj.setActive to false so that these are initialized in our scene but are not activated yet. We've just got them in holding. And then we want to go pull.add obj to add our object to the pool. Now we can copy initialize pool and put it up in our start so that when our game starts, we'll go around this loop and create 10 objects which are deactivated and ready to be used. Now we're going to want a function to get our pulled object so it can be activated and used when we need it in our game. So this is going to be a public function and it's going to return a game object and we'll call it get pulled object. In here, we're going to want to iterate around our pool. So we go for each game object obj in pool. And what we want to do is look through our pool and check if explanation mark to say not our object is active in the hierarchy. So we're looking for one that's deactivated. If it is deactivated, we're going to return that object. Now, if this loop didn't find any deactivated objects, we're going to create a new one and add it to our pool so that if we go over the limit we've set by default, we'll continue creating objects and the game doesn't break. So the same as above, you can literally grab this code in initialize pool, copy it and paste it down below. And then here we'll return that new object created. You can see we have an error here. We've got two things named obj here. And really we've got duplicated code. Whenever you copy and paste a block of code, that should point out to you that you're duplicating code. And that's a good time to copy this and create a new function. Let's go private game object create new obj. Inside here, let's paste in that duplicated code and then return obj. Now, whenever we have that duplicated code above, we can copy create new obj and paste it to replace it. And instead of setting this to a variable and then returning it, we can delete this code and just say return create new obj. 
No, you are. You've learned some good coding practice and learned how to make an object pooler. What an amazing video. <laughs> cool. So now we can go back to Unity. And in our hierarchy, I'm going to right click and go create empty and call this object pools. I'm going to use this empty game object to keep our hierarchy tidy. So with this selected, I'm going to right click on top of this and go create empty, which will create a child within our object pools. This game object, I'm going to call bullet pool. I'm going to right click on object pools again, create empty, call it enemy pool. Now from our assets, I'm going to drag our script onto our enemy pool object. And then the same with our bullet pool object. Cool. Now we need some prefabs to populate this prefab slot. So first of all, let's make our enemy. I'm going to want our enemy to move across the screen. So it's going to need a rigid body 2D and I want him to get hit by bullets. So I'm going to add a box collider 2D. In our rigid body 2D, I'm going to set gravity scale to zero so he doesn't fall off the screen. To make this enemy into a prefab, all you have to do is drag this from the hierarchy into your assets. We've got our enemy sprite and our enemy prefab. It's got a little blue box so you know that one's the prefab. We can delete our enemy in the hierarchy there. Click on enemy pool and drag in our enemy prefab. Now to make use of our object pooler, we're going to need something to spawn these enemies into our game. So I'm going to right click in our hierarchy again, go create empty and call this enemy spawner. In the inspector, there's this little gray outline of a cube. If you click on this and select one of these icons, I'm going to click the red diamond. You can now zoom in into your scene and see where your enemy spawner is in your game. I'm just going to drag this down near the bottom corner of our game. So our enemies will spawn and I'm going to get them to move along to the right. Cool. So now let's write the script for that enemy spawner. Let's click add component, new script for this enemy spawner and double click on this to open up. In here, we're going to want a public object pooler of our enemy pool and a public float for our spawn intervals. I'm going to set that to a default of one. So it'll spawn an enemy every one second. We can delete our update since we don't need this. And I'm going to start off by creating our spawn object method, since this is the code that you'll be able to reuse any way you use an object pooler. So first off, we want to grab an enemy from our pooled enemies list. So we're going to go game object enemy equals enemy pool dot get pulled object. So if we remember, this is going to grab us a deactivated object from our enemy pool. If we don't have one that's deactivated, it'll create a new one. Next up, you're going to want to make any changes to your enemy before setting them to active. For example, I want my enemies transform dot position to be the same as my enemy spawners transform dot position so that they appear where the spawner is. You could do other things here like randomizing the color of your enemy or any other setup you might want. Then once it's all ready, you can go enemy dot set active and set this to be true. You can call this code any way that you want for your game to work. But for me, like we said, I want my enemies to spawn at a one second interval and have this continuously loop. So what I'm going to do is create an I enumerator called spawn enemy coroutine. And inside here, I'm going to say while true. So we can have something endlessly looping. I'm going to yield return and have a new wait for seconds and pass in our spawn interval. Once our one second has waited, I'm going to call spawn object. Now simply up in our start function, I'm going to call start coroutine and then call our spawn enemy coroutine. And that's all you need to get enemies non-stop spawning in your game. I'm just going to disable my bullet pool and then click on our enemy spawner and drag in our enemy pool into this enemy pool slot of the script. Now I'm going to press play and then press pause so we can see our objects pulled and deactivated before they start spawning. So play and if I'm fast enough, pause. <laughs> Cool. So you can see on the side, we've got all these deactivated clone enemies. If I now unpause, you can see our enemies are getting added to our game. They currently don't have a script, so they don't move. But every one second, we're getting a new enemy clone. Now we've run out of our 10. So you can see it's creating new enemies and activating them and adding these to our pool. Now, as you can see, these enemies are added just to the plain hierarchy of our game, and it's not very well organized. In my games, I would rather all these enemies to be collapsible as children inside the enemy pool. To do this, let's jump back to our object pool script. And where we have create new object and we instantiate our prefab, instead of this quaternion identity in vector zero, you can instead just say transform. Then whatever object pool this is will instantiate the object underneath itself. If we go back to Unity and press play, you'll be able to see now a little arrow here underneath our enemy pool. I can open this up and see all our enemies tidily stored away. Cool. Next, I'm going to reactivate our bullet pool and I'm going to create some bullets for us. So I'm going to right click in our hierarchy and go 2D object sprites circle and call this bullet. At the top, we're going to want to tag this and add a new tag. Press the plus in this empty list and call it bullet. Then click on bullet again under the tags, click bullet 
I'm going to make the scale of this circle smaller. So 0 0.2 by 0 0.2. Move its order in the layer to the front. So I'm going to set it to 2 and make it yellow so it stands out. Since we want our bullet to move, we're going to want a rigid body 2D. Set the gravity scale again to 0. Add another component and we're going to add a circle collider 2D. And I'm going to set this to is trigger. Is trigger will mean that this doesn't push around any other objects with a collider and will instead pass through them but still be detectable. So when we shoot at our enemies, they won't be pushed, but they will be destroyed. So that we don't have bullets flying around everywhere endlessly. I'm going to add a new script called bullet. Double click on this to open it up. And in here, I'm going to add a on trigger enter 2D. We're going to want to say game object, which is this bullet dot set active to false. So our bullet goes back to its pool of bullets. Cool, that's all we need. So back in Unity, we can now make this bullet of prefab, drag it into the assets, delete it from the hierarchy, select bullet pool and drag our bullet into our prefab slot. And now we can create a spawner for our bullets, which will be the gun on our ship. So let's select our ship, click add component, new script. I'm just going to call this shoot since bullet spawner sounds kind of weird for a gun. <laughs> Maybe we should start calling them bullet spawners. So in here, we're going to want to go public object pooler and call this bullet pool. And then for our game, what I want it to do is when I click my mouse on the screen, I want a bullet to be shot at that location. So I'm going to go if input dot get button down is fire one and in unity by default this is set to your mouse button left click then we're going to shoot delete update because we don't need this and create a new function which will be a private void shoot first let's get our mouse position with a vector to mouse position equals camera dot main dot screen to world point and we'll pass in our input dot mouse position next we need to know which direction to shoot in so from us to our mouse position so vector to direction equals brackets mouse position take away brackets vector 2 and outside the brackets we'll type transform dot position and then outside the next brackets again we'll want dot normalized cool the next bit should look familiar because now we're going to get our game object bullet and say equals bullet pool dot get pulled object exactly the same as our enemy one and actually exactly the same. We're going to say bullet dot transform dot position equals our transform dot position because we want it to be shooting out of our spaceship and then bullet dot set active to be true. Oh, and I've been silly and named the class shoot and also the function shoot. But let's just call this shoot bullet. Cool. So now we've got our bullet active. Let's get it moving. So we're going to go rigid body 2D RB equals bullet dot get component rigid body 2D. And on our bullets rigid body, we want to go dot add force, pass in our direction and times that by the speed you want your bullet to go at. So we could actually make a variable for this. I was going to hard code it, but for the sake of making this good code, let's go public int bullet speed. And I'm going to set this to a default of 10. And then down in add force, we can now times our direction by our bullet speed. And then go comma force mode 2D and we want dot impulse. Cool, so now we can take our shoot bullet function and stick it up in our start under our input get button down. So when we click on the screen, it'll shoot a bullet in that direction. And I can see we've made a mistake at the top here. Whoops, sorry. We wanted to delete our start and use our update. So instead at the top, change start to update so that we keep checking for our mouse button to go down and fire. Sorry again, but now if we go to Unity and press play, we can see our bullet port and our enemy pool. Our enemies are filling up, so now if we shoot a bullet, you can see our bullets get used because our bullets aren't colliding with anything. When I shoot them all around, we're creating lots and lots of bullets in our pool, which is not a good thing because if I zoom out, you can see there's bullets flying everywhere. <laughs> so what I'm going to do, create some walls for our bullets to hit around our game scene. So to add collidable walls, what I'm going to do is right click and go create empty, call this wall, then add a new component and search for an edge collider 2D. Then I'm going to open up the points and set this to be 6. If I click on Edit Collider, but to get this to wrap around our camera view, I'm going to drag one down to the bottom and work on the right. So drag one out to the right here and one out to the bottom right there. Then I'm going to drag this out like a snake, adding one point in this corner, going down, another point in this corner, and dragging them to meet at the bottom. Cool. You could use a Box Collider 2D and also check when something exits the Box Collider. But this is my quick and easy way for now, even if that wasn't quick or easy. <laughs> Cool, so now with that in place, when we shoot our bullets, they'll hit the wall and disappear. So we don't get unlimited bullets now. Next, I'm going to get our enemy moving. So in our assets, I'm going to select on our enemy prefab, scroll down and click add component, new script, call it enemy. And I'll double click on this script to open up. And in here, I've got it right this time. We don't want this start, but we do want a public float speed for our enemy, which I'm going to set to a default of 10. And then I want my enemies just moving along to the right. So to do this, I'm just going to say transform 
dot translate. I'm going to pass in vector free dot write times speed times time dot delta time. That's all you need to get someone moving over to the right. Real easy. Next, I'm going to want my enemies to be destroyed just like my bullets. So I'm going to go on trigger enter 2D, insert my game object to be dot set active false. And to get this so our enemies destroy on our walls just like our bullets, we can set our walls to be trigger as well. So let's go back to Unity, select our wall, and click Is Trigger. So now when we press play, whoa, our enemies are moving fast, <laughs> and I can't shoot them because they're too fast. Uh, yeah, yeah, they did. <laughs> you you saw you saw I hit it. <laughs> okay, cool. Going to uh, lower that speed. Don't look, don't look, I'm a good gamer. Lower the speed to two, not so it's easier, just cause, uh, so you can see it better, of course. Cool, so now when I shoot at our enemies, oh, I missed still. You can see our enemy gets destroyed when it hits our bullet. It gets deactivated and reused in our pool. And when it hits the wall, it gets deactivated as well and goes back to our pool. So you can see these are clicking on and off, being activated and deactivated. Very cool! And that's object pooling and also a little mini shooter game. <laughs> Two in one. If you want to grab this all for yourself, I'm going to create a package and stick it on my Patreon so you can check it out there or restart the video and follow along <laughs> if you didn't the first time. Cool, be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!